Hello everybody, happy Monday. I hope you are having a great day so far. So today we are gonna talk about the average length of time that it takes to conceive with PCOS. So if this is the first time that you're watching one of my videos, I'm Molly, I'm the nutritional therapy practitioner over at parsleyandpumpkins.com where I teach women with hormonal imbalances and menstrual cycle disorders the simple shifts that they need to make to bring their hormones back into balance, have easy pain-free periods, and support their natural fertility. So I thought about this topic, um, today's topic, the average time it takes to conceive with PCOS for quite a while. And I really wanted to talk about this topic in particular because we have all kind of grown up with certain expectations about fertility that can make us, and especially women with PCOS or any other hormonal imbalance, feel very discouraged about our fertility and about our ability to become pregnant. Our view of conception has been totally screwed up. Um, you, since a young age, we have this constant barragement of how to prevent pregnancy, right? Like our sex ed in middle school is essentially how to prevent it. Every piece of information we get from then on well and through college is about how to prevent it. You know, we're taught um, you can get pregnant at any point during your cycle. We're taught that you have no control over your fertility. Um, we're taught that you need to have this constant, you know, barragement of replacement hormones in order to prevent it. And so naturally, when we're older and ready to start our family, we're on pins and needles about like, oh my gosh, we need to wait until the very last minute until we're 100% ready because it's going to happen instantly, right? That is what we're led to believe. And so, you know, because why else would we have been taught to be so vigilant about preventing unless it was super easy to get pregnant. That's kind of the a mindset that we have growing up. And then many of us unfortunately learn the very hard way that this is not always the case. So if this resonates with you so far, if you're live or if you're watching on the replay, type yes into the comments. Let me know if this has been your experience too and let me know how long you have been trying to conceive so far. So the other issue with this, and I, I promise all of this relates to the average length of time that it takes to conceive with PCOS, um, but the other issue that we run into is that we are not taught how to preserve our fertility during this period of prevention, right? So we're taught everything about how to prevent pregnancy, that this is the most important thing to focus on, but there's no discussion about diet, lifestyle, exercise, any of the things that will help us preserve our fertility so that down the line when we're ready, we know that we have it, right? There is no information about that. There's no discussion about what nutrients your body needs to ovulate, what nutrients you need to support a healthy pregnancy, and not just to grow a baby, but to grow a really outstanding baby, right? It's kind of insane. If you think about, this is kind of a good um, comparison. If you think about how much thought and planning you put into deciding what career you wanted to have or pursue, and think about how long it took you to plan your wedding, <laughs> most of us will spend an entire year planning our wedding, but then we decide we wanna create a brand new human, and we're like eating junk food and soda, and we're totally confused when we come off of birth control, and our menstrual cycles are totally out of whack. And it's really not our fault. Like we've been conditioned to expect it to be very easy to get pregnant. We've been conditioned to think that it will happen instantly. You just don't see these long fertility journeys in movies. You don't see miscarriage on TV, except for like that, um, the show This Is Us, if anyone has watched it, that's a fantastic show. I think that's the only one that has um, even attempted to cover some of these topics in a really great, great way. So what I really wanna share with you in all of this information is that if it's not happening quickly, it doesn't mean that it won't happen. It just means that it's taking some time, right? Unexplained infertility does not mean permanent infertility. If it's taking a year, two years, five years, just keep the knowledge in your heart that all it really takes is one great egg, one healthy sperm, 
and one cycle where everything is timed correctly. That's all that it takes. And all of us kind of know that in a sense and then combine that with all this information about, you know, making sure you're preventing for so long and we really feel like it should happen instantly. But what I want you to know is that all of those things are within your control. Your egg health, your husband's sperm health, the timing, all of that is within your control, which is such great news. You know, we, we really try to look to our past to tell us what will happen in our future, but you cannot predict your future based on your past. It just doesn't work like that. And that's actually really great news. Just because you haven't produced an amazing baby yet doesn't mean that you aren't able to, right? So here are some of the stats, because I know you're like, yes, I totally agree, I have been there, but also how long is this really gonna take because I'm ready right now. <laughs> totally, totally get that. So here are some stats. For a couple with no health issues, there's an 85% chance that they will conceive within 12 cycles. And that's a pretty good baseline. And so what that really means is that it doesn't happen instantly, right? Even for women who have perfect hormones, it doesn't happen instantly. This really just is an area of female health and fertility that we didn't know growing up. We were, we, we were conditioned to expect this to be an instant kind of thing. And so when we grow up and find out that it's not, we're just totally confused by it. So I, what I, I'm hoping that this message brings to you is some stress relief. Because I know when you are trying to conceive, it feels like it has to happen right now. It feels like life or death. It feels like this panic and this desperation that it hasn't happened yet. But staying in that mentality only makes that journey more painful. It only makes the month after month even more painful and more devastating. But you can shift your mindset to say, this is taking a while and that's normal. This is taking a while and that's totally okay. We are okay. I am okay. I can still be in control of this journey and what's happening with my body. So you might have noticed um, that I said there's an 85% chance of conceiving within 12 cycles, not 12 months. So this is really important when you have PCOS because many women with PCOS have rather long cycles. And it is still possible to get pregnant during one of those cycles. As long as you do ovulate eventually and you happen to have timed intercourse correctly, you can get pregnant even on one of those really long cycles. And if anyone is, is having a hard time with the mentality side of this, of just even believing that it is still possible, I highly encourage you to do a Google search. Just copy the title of this video, Average Time to Conceive with PCOS. Type, uh, paste it into Google and look at some of the forums. Many women have asked this question before and you will see response after response after response of women saying, we tried for a long time, I finally found this one thing that I improved in my health and we were pregnant the next month. Like there are those success stories out there. So if you're having a hard time believing that this could be you, go and read some of those because it just, it can really help boost your motivation. And some of those stories are these women with really long cycles where they said, you know, I had super irregular periods, I hadn't had a period in three months, but I got pregnant. It, as long as you're ovulating during those cycles, it can happen. And so when you're thinking about um, this, this statistic, 85% will conceive within 12 cycles, for a woman with PCOS, 12 cycles could easily be two years. And that's okay, that's still normal. You can still look at this and say, this is okay, this is normal. There's nothing wrong, I don't need to panic. Because <laughs> I've been there and I know how quickly you can panic, so I just wanna relieve some of that stress. So um, 12 cycles in two years would be about a 60 day cycle, which really isn't uncommon for women with PCOS. So if you have some of these issues, you wanna be you know, really taking some of these things into consideration for your unique bio-individual um, health. This really is about you, not necessarily what works for someone else. And so the time to conceive also depends on what actions you are taking 
to improve your fertility, right? So someone who is doing nothing, right? Like they've been trying for a few years, it's not working. They haven't changed how they're eating. They're still eating a standard American diet. They're not exercising. They're not working on whatever underlying issues they have with their health. Their chances are not improving month after month. But if you are one of the women who is willing to put in that effort to learn about your cycles, learn about nutrition, learn about what your body is really asking for, you can be increasing your chances month after month. And you'll actually be able to see it in your charts if you're tracking some of that information. It's so cool to see and it's just so heartening to be able to see some progress around this. So this is what I recommend. First, first of all, know that it is okay and it is normal for conception to take a while. It does not mean that you're broken. It does not mean that it will never happen. It does not mean that it's not meant to be. All that it means is that you are experiencing part of the human condition that is not talked about. This is just not something we ever grew up learning about or hearing and so when we're experiencing it it feels unfamiliar we weren't prepared it's emotional so just know this is not uncommon it's totally okay so the second thing is work with someone who can do a thorough analysis of your health from a functional perspective this is really important when you have a hormonal imbalance so functional basically means you're looking at the function of the body, like what is your body actually doing? <laughs> Which you would think is what medicine is, but it's kind of not. So typically your doctor will look at your symptoms, look at your blood work, they'll diagnose you with PCOS, and then they'll offer you ways to manage the symptoms, right? So the fertility drugs, the Clomid, um, all of those, they force ovulation in your body. They just like we've, discovered the technology to force you to ovulate is what those drugs do. So a functional practitioner will look at your symptoms, all of your tests, and ask why is your body not ovulating on its own, right? Why is your body not doing this thing that it was built to do? Your body was designed to ovulate regularly, to get pregnant, to grow healthy children. So when I work with clients, I'm looking at what's happening underneath, what is happening on a functional level that is contributing to this hormonal imbalance. I'm looking at what's happening with your blood sugar. Is, um, is adrenal stress and high cortisol stealing nutrients from your menstrual cycle, from being able to produce progesterone? I'm looking at, is there an overgrowth of bacteria in your gut that's preventing you from absorbing all of your nutrients? Uh, do you have intestinal permeability and then your immune system is on overdrive and this is causing an autoimmune condition? We're looking deeper to see what is it exactly that's causing your PCOS in the first place and how do we get your body on track so that it can do what it's naturally designed to do. And so the third thing that I recommend is to learn how to monitor your fertility signs. I honestly think that many issues of infertility are very likely due to just simply not timing intercourse correctly. I have read so many books, so many articles about intercourse timing and fertility tracking, and half of them are just ridiculous, <laughs> truly. So the trick is that the sperm needs to already be in your uterus before you ovulate. Like they need to be waiting in the lobby so that when you ovulate, they are there and ready to meet the egg, right? So the trick also is that sperm can really only survive for about five days in ideal condition. And so timing is really important just to make sure that all of those pieces are happening at the same time. And so one of the tools that I give my fertility clients is a video course. You can kind of do it on your own and it teaches you how to track your basal body temperature, how to monitor your cervical fluid, what all the different types of cervical fluid means, because my cervical fluid at peak fertility might be slightly different from yours. And that's where a lot of women get confused too, is we're kind of looking for this one thing. Um, 
And so I also do some information about ovulation test strips, but that's kind of a, it's not as much fun as cervical fluid and basal body temperature. You just don't get as much cool information, to be honest, but it's helpful. And so the last part um, is really important. When you're tracking your basal body temperature, what this does is also confirm that ovulation was successful. And so when you have PCOS, one of the reasons you might have a super long cycle, like if it is 60 days or longer, your body might be trying to ovulate a couple of times before it's actually successful. And so when you're tracking your basal body temperature, we know what would happen after successful ovulation. And so if you're seeing all these fertile signs like, oh, I'm totally about to ovulate, but then your basal body temperature doesn't change, you can get a, a clue in there that, oh, your body tried to ovulate, it wasn't quite successful. And so in a week or two, you can look out for that same pattern again. And that just allows you to keep trying during the cycle so you're not missing any opportunity um, to identify ovulation and be able to time things correctly. So when you're doing all three of these things, right, you're working on the mindset, just knowing this is normal, it's totally okay. When you're working on improving your health and you're working on learning about your, um, your fertile signs and your cycle in general, you'll be able to just see the improvements month after month and you'll know that your chances of conceiving are improving month after month. So if you wanna take a functional approach to your fertility, you can book a free call with me and we can talk about what you've tried before, what's worked, what hasn't, and what you can do going forward to get some help around this. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button below and consider subscribing to my channel for a new video about PCOS, fertility, and women's health every single Monday. Next Monday, I will be coming out with a video about how to choose the best prenatal vitamin for PCOS, and I'm going to have a fun cheat sheet that you can download so that you can compare whatever prenatal vitamin you're taking now with some of the reference ranges and just make sure that you're getting a really good one. All right, and if you are ready to bring your hormones back into balance, have easy pain-free periods, and support your natural fertility, you can book a free call with me and connect over at parsleyandpumpkins.com. Talk to you soon.